Hello everyone, this is Ben Ryder from the Academy of Gaming, Film and Animation, and the last constraint that we're going to be looking at is a combination of the point and aim constraints, and this is one of my favourites, um, because I'm a big fan of uh, Diesel Punk and Steampunk, and so having anything with pistons in it is always cool, um, and this one just makes animating these pistons so much easier, um, because if you were to try and animate these slowly, straight ahead, pose by pose, you might get it, um, but unless you're going for a very stop-start Tim Burton sort of um, animation, um, then it's going to look a little bit off. If you want that smooth mechanical animation, um, then these, this setup is really uh, the best way of going about it. So it's a combination of two constraints, this point constraint, and then this one down here is the aim constraint. The same thing we looked at before with the spotlight, just utilized differently. Um, so yeah, that's all it really is, and it's a fantastic one to use there. Um, but I will go through now, just by getting rid of the constraints, how you can apply it, because there are a few things you need to consider when doing this. And this just takes practice. Um, I had to do it a few times before I got it exactly right. So let's have a look at what's going on underneath the hood. So first of all, I'm gonna get rid of these. by going to delete constraint. And then these ones here, which are these aim constraints here, I'm gonna do the same. In fact, I'm gonna select them both and see if I can do it both at the same time. And it's still there. So now when we move this, nothing happens. When I move this, nothing happens. And vice versa, when I move this, nothing happens. And so if I was to try and animate this, um, you know, I could try and do it like this and then move it across. Oops, that one's still active, it would seem. There we go. So if I was to try and animate this and uh, like, you know, move this across and everything, I could do it manually. I could just be like, okay, well now let's go here and then let's, you know, move that down there and then that will match up to there. Um, but it will be very stilted. You can see already how juttery that looks and everything. Um, and if we wanted to change frame rates, uh, it'd be a nightmare there as well. So what we're gonna do instead, we go back a couple of steps launch now that the constraints will be back in, um, is first of all, we set up this constraint here, just with this point constraint. Again, making sure maintain offset and all constants are there. Um, and then I'm gonna set up this one as well, the same constraint. And now when we're moving this and I'll see if I've, yep, okay, so it's done it with one but not the other. So I'm just going to get rid of this aim constraint and the same constraint, and then we'll start from scratch. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, um, basically, when this moves, nothing else moves, and when this moves, only the top block moves. So, now we're looking at these. How do you do this? Well, you've got to have them going in both directions. So the way you do that is you select this one first, and then the bottom one, and then you go here to aim, it's worth having a look at the uh, properties of this um, to make sure maintain offset is done and all of these are left just the way they are. Constraint on all axes here, go apply. And then I select this bottom one and select this up here and then I click apply again because that will now allow it to have both of them reacting to that and both of them are acting in the same time and that's what really sells that magic there. So yeah, that's how you do that. It's really quite simple once you've seen it a few times and practiced it. Um, but it can be quite useful if you want to have anything mechanical looking, including, you know, doors, mechs, spaceships, you name it. Um, so it's really cool. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful. Again, I will remind people though, that when it comes to these, um, these are designed to help. You don't necessarily need them. So if you can't quite get it working, don't stress. I did this so that people could be aware of the options that were available to them, not because I think that you now need to use all of them. But they are uh, cool to start learning how to do, especially if you want to get into animation, and especially if you want to get into character animation. Because being able to use these without accidentally then changing the rotation of the bone um, is really important. So I hope you've got something out of this series, um, and it can help you take your animated assets to the next level. And I will catch you next time.